I'm Johnny, and I'm from Window Street Financial. I uh, first want to give a big shout out to Catalyst and the Department of Energy for having us here. Uh, it's been an amazing experience being part of Catalyst, and um, right on. Thanks for having us. Um, yeah, Catalyst. <laughs> yeah, so uh, Window Street Financial is a, basically an impact financing company. We want to connect good capital to good debt. Um, and our first product uh, is going to be Sundowment. I'll explain more about that in a little bit, but first let's take a look at lending. Um, okay, so on the right here, we have capital providers or investors, governments, foundations, pension funds. Um, they buy debt through a mechanism on the debt market through an intermediary Wall Street banks. Um, the borrowers provide that debt onto the debt market. Um, Window Street thinks that there's a problem here and that's because Borrowers don't really know where the capital comes from that they're taking on, and they don't know when they make an interest payment on that whose pocket it goes to. And for them, or a certain class of borrower, that might be an ethical dilemma because it's ending up into someone's pocket that you might not align with. And so what we want to do is put a window in Wall Street um, and directly connect borrowers to affinity organizations capital. So for example, let's say you're a Cal alumni, you graduated 20 years ago, you're looking to finance solar for your house, um, you can look for capital fr through Sundowment to, from Cal directly, Cal's endowment, to finance that solar system. So we're calling it impact borrowing. So you know, everyone's heard of impact investing, deciding where to put your capital. We're, this is providing borrowers a decision on where to put their debt. Why we think solar is the perfect model to start off this impact borrowing trend with is um, they're going solar for multiple reasons, both economic but altruistic. And it's good for the environment, it's energy security, and our self-sufficiency. And so we wanna align the capital source with those motivations. So when, when they're taking on the debt, they're also taking on for good reason and that interest payment also goes to a good cause. Endowments benefit because there's a lot of pressure on them to align how the endowment's managed with what the mission of the organization is. So let's say it's an educational endowment, you know, it, it, it needs to be managed within the line that mission. And so there's a lot of pressure from divestment movements on campaign on college campuses and stuff like that to be more sustainably managed. And we're creating an investment vehicle for them to directly reinvest in their community into their alumni while still making a good return and being able to measure that impact. So basically they provide solar loans to people that have affinity from them and those loans are paid back over time. To go through a little bit more of how this works from a financial structure perspective, um, the endowments put money into a special purpose fund, this would be like a private equity fund, that we would set up to do loan marketing, servicing, origination, and underwriting. We would partner with local solar installers um, to deploy that capital through solar systems on the homeowners' homes with capital from their from the organization they, they choose, and that money is paid back over time to the endowment, which makes a good stable return um, and a really low default rate. You know, solar is historically really low in, in terms of default because it's really offsetting the economic cost of the household electricity, um, and so it's even better than like AAA corporate bonds. The value propositions that we provide for homeowners is knowing where that interest payment's actually going and a better sense of emotion on why they're going solar, not just for themselves, but also for a connected to a mission. Um, for endowments, we're providing an investment vehicle that aligns with some of their sustainability mandates, like Cal uh, the UC endowment just mandated that uh, $500 million of their investment has to be directly, uh, in uh, directly invested into impact sustainable uh, vehicles. And then we also give them a way to like measure that, to monitor it and even provide it uh, that, that I'll show you in a little bit, a portal to show, to outreach to their members and our donors on what they're doing with their money. For solar installers, which are primarily in a highly commoditized market, you go to the top solar installers out there, um, you get a proposal, they're really offering the same financing from the same banks and they're offering the same hardware. So it's really what you get is three different pieces of paper on your desk and they're all different colors, one's green, one's orange, one's blue, but it's the same thing. We're actually we're aligning a unique product, which would be wh where the capital comes from, directly for that consumer. So their, their, alumni, their, their alumni network or maybe even like an organization they believe in like uh, Nature Conservancy and, and other endowments, we can sign up for the platform. 
Also, we believe that this will lead to higher conversion rates because the installers now have a, a natural emotion tie to sell into. So for the demo, we've built a website that explains this model, so I'm not going to bore you with regurgitating over the website. But uh, one thing I do want to show you is we also built this monitoring porter for endowments. Um, so they can actually monitor the investments they have on our platform. So they can monitor how much clean energy they've created, uh, how much carbon they've offset, um, also how, how quickly we're deploying their capital and in what, what geographies or where are their, endow uh, their alumni are actually taking on this debt um, and partnering with them. Also there's return and, um, and you know, how much capital, we, like how quickly we're deploying their capital. So some of the customer, you know, it's a pretty complex model here. But some of the customer validation we've done so far is for, for homeowners, through all of our interviews and surveys, we found that 65% of people would actually, given the same rate, would, would want to borrow from an endowment over a bank. 11% would even pay um, a half a percent point higher to know to borrow directly from an endowment and ensure that their interest payment is going to someone that aligns with them. On the endowment side, we've had promising conversations with both um, UC, uh, University of California and Stanford endowments, which are really big endowments. Um, and then we've also had a partnership with Responsible Endowment Coalition, which runs a lot of these divestment campaigns on campuses. To we were, we're going to have them promote our investment vehicle as a model. From in solar installers, we have went through like to understand the sales experience because really we're providing a, a unique sales experience for the homeowner. Um, we we had you know interviews with all the local sales uh, installers and really found out that everyone buys solar on emotion. And um, when we explained how our unique financing could could help trigger that emotion. Um, it was unanimous, the people we talked to that are in the business saying that this will really help conversion rates. So I'm Johnny, uh, a lot of solar background. Goggins here with software background. Nick and Daniel, which are from investment and underwriting, are on the team, but they couldn't be here today. Uh, they both had babies recently, so, uh, so they're at home. Um, and so kind of where we're going here. Uh, where we're going here is we're, we're looking to start out a pilot phase. So one of the, one of the problems with this model is we need to bring on endowments on board, but in order for them to make a debt investment, they, they, it needs to be a large capital. So Stanford or UC Berkeley, they don't do anything below $30 million. In order to, we need to operationalize our model and get it running before they can do that type of investment. So we're looking to raise $500 in, or 500K in equity capital to do about 20 solar loans and to, st uh, to start that, that operationalizing of our model. Um, in, in building that, we're going to have partner with three um, installer partners to, to roll it out within one geographic area of California. And then from there, once we operationalize it, we don't think it should be a problem bringing on more, more capital sources and building out this endowment network. Thank you. So uh, my question is really on scale. So, you know, really getting from that 500, 500K up, you know, obviously um, the cost of an in individual solar system is small, um, especially for an endowment. So how are you going to bridge that gap? Yeah, so, um, so the endowments aren't actively managing the investment. So, like our company, Window Street, will be doing that for them. They, they will commit, like, like I think, you know, in our conversations, 30 million would be like a, even a small commitment for them. Uh, and then we would commit a deployment schedule for that. So we, we will pull it maybe on like uh, two million increments over, over a year. Um, and uh, how we deploy that is like uh, we, we will work with like larger installer partners like Sungevity or, or people that are installing solar at a quickly, a, a fast rate. And we'll bring this financing platform to them. So we can, we can already tap into this, the, the ramp that solar is already targeting. We're not going to like reinvent a sales network. We're not going to put out any boots on the ground. We're just going to partner with people that are already selling solar, you know, millions of dollars a day, and and come to them with this solution, saying, "Hey, there's this many people within your your base at which you're operating, and they're all alumni from this endowment, and we've signed up this endowment to deploy this much capital in here. We believe you should deploy it for us." Mike's on. Yeah. Mike's on. I'm going to ask you. Um, your partners who aren't here, but you'll have to answer for them. Um, have any of you ever been not just a financier, but a fiduciary, which is what you're proposing to be, mm -hmm. um, and understand what that's about? And if can you um, flesh out 
how that would function in your organization in terms of how you would staff structure, value, um, uh, the financial elements of uh, the material, the collateral, uh, the loans as an organization? Yeah, yeah, this is a great question. I wish Daniel was here. So um, we're not securitizing loans. They're definitely collateralized. Um, what what we're, we're kind of going to be targeting is probably building off already some of the peer-to-peer -peer lending traction that uh, Lending Club, Prosper, SoFi have already built on. And most of the the back end of, of that lending is done by, by WebBank, a bank out of Utah that, that is able to lend and underwrite these loans within all the states they operate in. So we're going to piggyback on that model and not reinvent that, that wheel as well and look for partnerships with already that, that lending community and that, that experience, but really just put together the whole deal. Okay, so uh, why wouldn't I just do the lowest cost option and then donate money every year to Dartmouth? Yeah. I mean, what's the, I don't get it. You know, I mean, uh, that's, that's a, great, a great question. Um, the, all, our, our model isn't premised on being n like above market, like we're gonna offer you a market rate, but we also are offering a, a higher quality product, we believe, and-, and Just walk me, like, how, how do you, with a limited, a much smaller pool, almost by definition of uh, endowments, how, how are you gonna offer a market competitive rate? So uh, the amount of capital the diamonds have are like is five hundred billion dollars. That's just educational. So it's, know, it's but the amount of the amount of capital out there going into these funds is a hundred x that. You know whatever it is, you're taking a subset of the total it, it, available loaner. Right? Residential solar markets ten billion dollars within the U.S. Uh, the endowment uh, asset base is five four hundred billion dollars. So. Um, even if in 10% of their assets are allocated to fixed income, which would, this would be fall under that asset allocation, it's still four times the size of the entire residential market. So, um, so I don't think there's like a, a, a scale problem from the endowment side. It's proving to them that the model is actually worth it and proving to them that the model can scale. Um, the, I, I wanna build on this, this point of why, would, uh, why wouldn't you just like take the cheapest rate? And we believe that like, this, is, this aligns with you might not be our customer. We, we want to someone that says, I care where my capital comes from. I, 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 want, I want to know that it's going into someone's pockets that I, I believe in. And this goes along the lines of like, a lot of people wrote off like organics and Whole Foods and, and things like that. And like people didn't, okay, we'll just buy the cheapest apple and it didn't matter where it was grown. It was grown across the country or, or in you know, Asia. But people like to like buy local to no impact and to, and to like believe in, in what they're consuming. And w that's what we're really providing is, is believing into where they're putting their debt. And, and it, it, only matter, it only will match up with a certain population, but we believe that's big. <laughs> <laughs>